Welcome to Top to Bottom Male Male Romance Podcast, where we celebrate all things male male romance. I am Jessica. And I'm Marky. And this is our July bottom episode. Yes. Before we get started on all the fun shenanigans, I do have to remind you, we do have reader groups. We have one on Facebook and one on Goodreads. You can jump in at any time and talk to us about our bottom picks for the month, cool series you'd recommend, TV show you fell in love with, comic book series that you recently found, anything related to male male romance, you can jump in and tell us about it there. We also have a Patreon. Our patrons get inside information about people who we're going to have on the show to interview and have a chance to submit questions for said interview person. So if you haven't had a chance to check it out, make sure you do so. And if you haven't done so yet, make sure you rate us on whatever it is you listen to us on. It helps other people find us too. Yes. So this month was our summer reading extravaganza, uh, something that we actually started last year. So just as a recap, this month we didn't have a set bottom book. We don't have one book that we're both reading together and that we discuss. We each got to pick a collection of books we wanted to read this month from our backlog and And got to just devour those this month. And so we're going to be talking about them today. Yes. Also, (laughs) as a fun little (laughs) added surprise, uh, we were able to get our super secret amazing guest on. Kurt Graves was able to join us for the third time on our lovely show. So we have a fantastic interview with him, uh, which we will do after we gush about what we read about. Absolutely. Yes. So what did you read? So I read Hell and Gone by Tal Bauer. I read the first in the Curl Up and Die series by Amy Nicole Walker, Dying to be Loved. And I read Monster and the Beast, which is a a manga. I read that as well. Let's see. I don't know which one I want to start with because I I enjoyed all of them, of course. This is super fun month for reading. You talk about the one with Tal, the Tal Bowers book, Mm -hmm. um, a lot in our interview. So we could probably suffice it to say you're going to gush about that here in a minute. So what about the other two? So the Curl Up and Die one that I read, The Dying to be Loved, this is the first time I read anything by Amy Nicole Walker. And I, I knew going in that she was really good with humor, but I fucking love Josh. He goes by Jazz. He's the like sassy hairdresser in the story. I adore him. He's a shit and he's sarcastic and he like apologizes to no one about being like feminine and flamboyant and a hairdresser and like all the tropes that go with it. It, it, it was one of those characters I immediately fell in love with. So I think it, it, we've talked about this before, how we're both just such suckers for snark and humor anyway, but she Ooh, nails it. Like yes. Jazz is great. I fucking love him. Like at one point, the detective guy he has to interact with, he doesn't like him for things that happen. And so the guy is like, oh, hey, you know, I'll I'll help you carry these grocery bags to your car. And he like does this whole Southern Belle thing where he's like, well, I do declare that is just the most, you know, kind thing you've ever offered me to do, but you can kindly go suck a dick essentially. And like, it, it was so fucking awesome. So I did the audiobook for this story, which was narrated by Joel Leslie. And it, of course he nails it. It was so funny. Like his Josh voice, and especially when he does the Southern Bell part, just I was laughing out loud in my car and I was like parked in a Kroger's parking lot, just <laughs> cracking up. So highly recommend. Very funny, very like action packed. There's like a murder mystery thing that goes with it, which is just great. But I cannot stress how <laughs> great Josh is. So that was the highlight. I, I loved it so much, that whole story. And then going into the manga that I read was the Monster and His Beast monster and the beast i keep doing that and that one was interesting i'm trying to figure out how to not be super spoilery but i remember lila talked about how because i'm in this anime group with her now so that's a thing (laughs) she recommended this manga when it first came out like i think late june or early early july i forget it's it's it like just came out. It's a brand new series. And she mentioned that the human character, Liam, is kind of a dick. And like going into it, okay, I'm going to spoil this a little bit, just a little bit. And I'm sorry, but it's still worth reading if you if you are into manga and stuff. But like Liam is this middle aged man who basically gets lost in the forest and he meets the monster character who has this, like he's giant. And he's got long hair and horns and stuff. And his name is, I think, Kavo. It's C-A-V-O, Kavo. So Kavo essentially saves his life and... Liam, instead of being afraid of him, is like, oh, you know, let's, you're a very particular thing. And like, immediately is like, you know what we should do? We should totally bone. And the monster's like, what the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> so there's actually, like, they, they don't have sexy times, but like, he was like, no, I'm not going to do you, but like, I'll help you out of the forest because you're beautiful and stuff. So fast forward, Kavo gets him out of the forest safely. 
And Liam's like going into town and Kava's like, I want to go with you because I love you. And he's like, well, but you're a giant and people are going to be scared of you. And he's like, well, ha ha, I have a workaround and I won't spoil what it is, but he goes with him. And so it, like at first I couldn't figure out why Lila was saying he was a dick. But then later on in the story, Liam is like very open about the fact that he's like promiscuous and is cannot be like satiated very well with like he, he constantly has to have sex. Like he goes out every night and like hooks up with a man or a woman like he's just he's that kind of person and he is unapologetic about it he's like well, i've lived my whole life like this this is who i am and this is how i've always done things and i apologize to no one and so kava was like well every time you come home you smell like somebody else it makes me sad and it smells gross and i don't want you to do it anymore and liam's like fuck you essentially like i've been totally upfront about who i am and i i'm gonna continue doing this i'm not gonna change for you and my knee-jerk reaction was like wow what an asshole like how dare you not love this giant monster man like <laughs> he loves you and he's sweet and adorable and doesn't it doesn't realize how big he is and crashes his head into things but then when i really analyzed it, I was like, well, but he was honest with him. Like he he's lived his whole life that way. Why would he just flip flop for this character and be like, well, OK, I'll stop living my life because it makes you uncomfortable kind of thing. So I see where they're coming from as far as like he's a dick. But at the same time, I'm like, but is he a dick? Because he has clearly faced this obstacle before and was like, well, no, like that's me. And you can either love me for me or you can take your happy monster ass back to the forest. So I won't spoil like moving forward what happens after that point but that was the point where I was like well shit I'm conflicted now about like whether or not I like <laughs> Liam anymore <laughs> like it's so weird that's totally fair too because if you have flip, flip that around and say you have a female character mm -hmm. who that's how she is that's how she's gonna be that's how she wants to be and she makes that up front and then she changes for her man everybody would be super pissed about that right yeah like, same oh don't yeah so I I get it like yeah so maybe that's a care I mean everybody has character flaws right so mm -hmm. yeah maybe he's a dick but that's not necessarily wrong right like that's kind of his mo I mean we're used to it and we we read a lot of happy love stories right so mm -hmm. we always kind of expect everybody to realize it's not that they're changing who they are it's that they want to just now be with that person. And that's what we're used to because we read a lot of romance, right? Right. So I get it. Yeah, I do too. It was one of those, like, I, I recognized the knee-jerk reaction right after it happened because I guess because I, like, Kavo's so sweet and, like, he's big and he's dopey and, like, he's scary, but, like, he doesn't want to be scary. He's just big and he can't help that he's scary, you know, that kind of stuff. And so when he loves Liam so much and Liam's like, no, I'm not going to change for you. I was like, you fucking monster. But at the same time, I'm like, well, yeah, but... I wouldn't, if it was, like you said, reverse, where it was a female character, I'd be like, yeah, fuck you. you. You don't need no man. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I, I, yeah, that's kind of where I'm hanging on. So because of that, it makes me want to continue with the series because I want to know, like, do they reach like an understanding? Is it like a poly relationship? Or does Liam come back around and realize like, oh, you know what? Maybe I do want to try just being with him or something. I don't fucking know. I, I want to know how it plays out because of that. Awesome. Yeah. So that was a very long-winded thing about a one volume of manga that I read. Uh, but <laughs> that was one volume? <laughs> yeah, it was, there's only one out. It's like... I think there's like a couple chapters in it, but there's only one volume of this manga out. So it was it was a roller coaster of a ride, let me tell you. Wow. Yeah, so yeah, I recommend. And then of course you had mentioned I, I talk about Helen gone a ton and I've I've been in the reader group too. I was just like, who the fuck else has been reading this because I love it? Like it was a short story. I think it was only like 190 pages or something. Holy shit, man, it was so good. It was so cowboy. It was like the most grittiest cowboy fucking thing I've read in a long time and I forgot how good Tall is about saying a lot with a little and the way he describes things is really beautiful like especially with scenery talking about like the mountainous area that they're in because they're in Montana about like it being jaggedy and beautiful and like ah, it was, I'm butchering it it's very pretty when he describes it there's I can see where a bunch of people had highlighted and all the big highlight parts were all just scenery because it was just gorgeous so I freaking loved that one it was really really good so A plus for that for sure what did you read yes <laughs> <laughs> well first i'm gonna comment on your shit <laughs> okay well i was just gonna just gonna follow up and say that from your description that you gave when we were talking to kurt i i'm actually super interested in reading that because just of the way it starts off but you can hear about that in the interview yeah yeah i got a little thrown off i had uh my original i only really had time for audio this month so when i went my original plan i was gonna read a couple books that i did get to read and then i was also gonna do a cut and run series by abigail rue but lo and behold 
those guys aren't on Audible right now. So I'm still depressed about that. Yeah, I'm I'm really freaking bummed. So I'm going to kind of keep an eye out, see if they ever show back up. But it just wasn't an option. So I had to pick something else. So I did read what I had originally intended to read of I did Red, White and Royal Blue from Casey McQuiston. And it was narrated by Ramon Dio Campo. It was really good. It was about the first son of the United States and the Prince of Wales. It was a, very much an enemies to lovers kind of situation because they hated each other at the beginning and then got there was like a public mild scandal that made it look like they hated each other so they had to look like they were besties so they were forced to spend time together and then of course they accidentally fall in love and then you know prince of wales you can't be gay Mm -hmm. so that was this big thing and and obviously like they try to do as much as they can to keep it under wraps right but that's of course gonna blow up right so anyways it's it was a beautiful story i loved it it was hilarious and i just really liked it they were they're like super educated dudes right so they're sending each other love letters basically that include quotes from like historical love letters and it was just i don't know there's so much about it that i absolutely loved and i recommended it was it was a fun read um it was a little sexier than i expected it to be because i was told it was ya i was not expecting expecting sexy times they weren't really graphic but they were definitely there Mm -hmm. so but yeah they're like in their 20s so it's not you know gross or anything um (laughs) (laughs) i'm glad you clarified like i i think i knew that they were adults but i'm i'm always hesitant and i think a lot of people are with it when it comes to like ya romance because like i remember when we were reading simon and the homo sapiens agenda like they're teenage boys of course they're gonna fool around like i it'd be stupid not to think that but like when it got to the part where him and when uh him and bram finally like get to toss around a little bit like I was like I don't want to hear this like and like I like I know that they're high school kids so I was like uh like <laughs> fast forward it but yeah I'm glad that they're you clarifying that they're in their 20s so I'm like oh okay like that's I'd be more willing to read that does it make me an asshole it might make me an asshole uh no okay no that's fine <laughs> that's also coming from the woman who scared herself when she thought that Tom Holland was underage oh my um, god yes <laughs> <laughs> that was the most tense hour of my life is watching Spider-Man for the first time and being like, that's a hot dude. I like him. And then him in the movie was like, I'm 16. I was like, oh, God. And as soon as I was able to turn my phone back on, I was like, fucking how old is Tom Holland? 21. Thank Christ. So the next book I read was Straight Boy from J. Bell. Super awesome. Also a YA. This one I talk about a lot in the interview, so I'm not going to super get into it here. But it was also, it was narrated by Kurt Graves, who we adore. And you'll get to hear her talk here in a few minutes. So yeah, I'm not going to get super into that, but I absolutely adored that book. I'm almost to the point where I might make Mark e. let us do this as a bottom pick. Just so good. Just super, super good and you'll hear more later so when i couldn't read cut and run or listen to it because this month is insane i was kind of feeling mystery i really wanted a mystery and i kind of stumbled upon i didn't realize that josh lanyon had a billion mysteries so i picked one and it was uh somebody killed his editor and that one was narrated by kevin r free and it's super cute it was a bunch of mystery writers at a writing retreat and then there's a murder and <laughs> That's I remember when you found that, like, and you were like, ah, like, you just loved the premise so much. Yeah, and that was that was super fun. It was, you know, kind of a cozy, and it, it was about, you know, a mystery writer, a mystery writer who's written, like, a series of cozy mysteries forever, and his career is kind of starting to wobble, and so his agent makes him go to this writing retreat so he could talk up this major editor or publisher, and murders ensue, romance ensues. That book was pretty sexy, I will say. And it was super fun, and there's a ton more, and then I didn't get to it yet, but I did downloaded Will and Jeff from Big Gay Fiction Podcast recommended Dead in the Garden from Dahlia Donovan. I've downloaded it. I haven't started it yet because there wasn't an audio and I didn't have time for reading reading, but I will hear soon. So I've got that downloaded to read. So that is also on my list. Yeah. So that was my summer reading. It's been a really fun month. It has been a fun month. Like I I look forward to our summer reading every year because it's just we pick such random fun shit to read. And um, and I love us trying to like (laughs) skirt around spoilers and not just rip it apart. So that's half the fun, I think. Yep. Agreed. So, yeah, I think that we should go ahead and move into our interview with Kurt because we kind of talk a little bit more about it there and we get to hear about his summer reading and we'll talk about a lot of things with him. Yeah. So without further ado, here is our interview with Kurt. So joining us today for the third time being on our lovely podcast is the magical Kurt Graves. He has been on our show three times, starting way back when we were just super fresh bananas starting at this. And he has surpassed Gail Carriger as how many times he's been on the show. So he um, insisted that we say that at the beginning. (laughs) So welcome back to the show, Kurt. (laughs) Why, thank you so much. (laughs) 
<laughs> I'm delighted to be back. And what a surprise that I've surpassed Gail. Wow. I certainly didn't campaign for that. Uh, I'm going to have to make sure to tag Gail on this so we can be like, hey, just so you know, like, <laughs> got to step up your game, man. <laughs> But then I'll have to come back again, and I oh, will no. gladly. I shouldn't. I shouldn't say it like have to, but like I do feel like I want to stake my claim. You know, at some point in life, you have to get serious about something, right. and I'm choosing this. I am all for this. This is my legacy. Super here for that. We need mm-hmm. to get shirts made where it's like, um, so no big deal and everything. But like, Kirk Graves has been on our show three times. So no. <laughs> what other yeah. podcast would say that? I mean, I mean mine. Well, but, that's, that's okay. That's we'll allow a little asterisk. It's like these. This one doesn't count. But yeah, either. as far as being a guest on other people's podcasts, you're you're the winner, and I feel good about Woo-hoo. it. I was I was worried you were going to be like actually, and I'm going to be like no, Kurt, damn it, <laughs> no, no, <laughs> no. In fact, other podcasts need to step up their game, asking me to come on because you guys are winning. Woo-hoo. Yeah, and they're and they're losing out. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> I'd like to think that I can produce a good podcast interview, having been on the other side of it so many times. Yes, well, and you also have probably far better equipment than we have, and <laughs> you definitely make a good showing. Well, thank you. And I mean, as far as the equipment is concerned, man, it's just start doing audiobooks, and then you have to invest in more <laughs> in better equipment. That's what <laughs> like, we're missing. We just need to start doing audiobooks. Yet. You know? No, you guys have really good sound quality. I'm, I've always enjoyed listening to you guys, even from the start. But since you guys started Zencaster in particular, the sound quality was has been really, really good. And awesome. thank you for turning me on to Zencaster because I use it now for my podcast. Woohoo! Mm-hmm. We're trendsetters. You are. Yeah, it's great. It's such a great tool to be able to talk to people who aren't in the same room as you. And that was all mm-hmm. I had ever done. So well, and that's how we started too when we first did our podcast. Me and Jess were just sitting next to each other, sharing one mic, just being idiots. So mm. um, since then. <laughs> We have grown and bought two mics. Oh, my gosh. Uh, yeah, right? Oh, <laughs> they grow up so fast. <laughs> so this month we're we're doing our summer reading. So it's a really casual month. Me and Jeff both have kind of picked up some like backlog books that we're doing. So we don't have like a set book that we're talking about. Mm-hmm. Um, AKA but- there's no outline. So buckle up. Yes. Yeah, so we're kind of <laughs> just... Just going buck wild with this. I know for sure one of the things we wanted to talk to you about was you're working with The Hunt. You and Tor dual narrated that book together. Mm -hmm. Um, And we wanted to ask about that because it was such a cool concept. It was the first time that we had listened to an audiobook that had dual narration. So I kind of, we both were just kind of wondering like how it works and who recorded what first and just kind of how it happened. Yeah. Dual narrations are an interesting beast. And I have to say my introduction to a dual narration was people talking telling me how much they dislike dual narrations. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yes. So I had heard a lot of complaints about them before I ever got approached to do one. But the reality is, if this is something you are doing for money as a job, when somebody offers you the chance to do work, you say yes. And, you know, they're, they are they have a particular set of challenges. It's also strangely fun to think about, like, oh, I'm working with somebody, even though, like, You don't actually get to interact with them at all during the process. There's still some part of your brain that is like, this is a group project. Mm -hmm. And if you are like me, I was that kid in school who always wanted to be like the best one in the group. And so there's that added motivation to like work a little bit harder and like stretch yourself a little bit further and hand it in a little bit sooner. Because like, I'm just I'm a group leader type of personality. I was Mm -hmm. that kid in school. You want to be friends with me, right? (laughs) <laughs> no, I, I think me and Jess could super relate to that because, like, we were both kind of those kids growing wow. up. Like, I was I was the one that every time I was in a group project, I immediately, like, assessed the people that I got grouped with mm-hmm. and could pick off, like, yeah, that guy's not going to do shit. Like, no. uh, anything he's assigned, I'm going to have to do. Like, just, yeah. No. I was more the introverted leader, and I would look at my group and say, yeah, I'm doing this whole thing by myself, and then I would do that. (laughs) How forward of you to actually just come right out and say it instead of doing it first? (laughs) My strategy was just to do it and then be like, oh, um, I noticed that you hadn't finished your part yet. Um, I know we just got assigned it yesterday, but it's done. (laughs) Yeah, here you go. (laughs) Oh my so, gosh. but like as far as like the logistics of doing a dual narration, how the hunt worked is, is that was produced through Tantor. So Tantor casting sent me an email saying, hey, you're being considered for this book. Do you want to be considered for it? Which is really nice that they always check in with you. Like, is this something you would even want to do before we put your name out there? And mm-hmm. I said, yeah. 
And that was one where the authors said yes to me based on like just whatever samples Tantor sent them or being familiar with my previous work, maybe. And so like that came back right away as like, yep, you're going to do it and you're going to be doing it with Tor. And then, of course, they give me his real name so I can actually contact him. Some people are smart enough to use a pseudonym. I am not one of them. (laughs) <laughs> Please don't look up my address. So like, so then we start corresponding. We both have to read the book separately. It's no surprise which character I end up playing because of course I'm going to play the twinky little, uh, <laughs> you know, wayward character who like hasn't figured out their life yet because that's what my voice sounds like. And Tor is going to play the established rough and tumble gruff detective because like that's what his voice sounds like. So we both we both get the book. I had to read the whole thing because like there's stuff in chapters that even though you're not the one reading it, like stuff happens that I feel like you need to know. And the other thing too is you got to know how many characters both of you have to have to give voice to. I, I had done one other dual narration before with uh, Iggy Toma and that one was was pretty easy because because the way the authors wrote the book, I think there were only like three or four people who crossed over besides the, like the two main characters. And so we really, we didn't have to coordinate that much beyond just like knowing what the main characters sound like. This book, however, I think there were like a dozen that yeah, like, there were would, a just, lot. would just like pop up in the other chapter. Like they're primarily in one person's chapter, but then they'd pop up in the other person's chapter and say like three things. And it's like, oh, damn it. Now I got to figure out how to... So that that required just a lot of of coordination and you know just sending sending files back and forth to be like this is what it, it sounds like when I do it for that particular book Tor recorded first so he was sending me his files and I was listening to them and then doing my best to match the performance that he was giving for those characters to the best of my ability because th- the other thing that became immediately clear when being paired with him is he and I have very different voices <laughs> and we do not sound alike and <laughs> so like I-, I was really worried about it actually so I was very happy to hear your review of it that did not say it sounded a mess and (laughs) that you were able to distinguish characters from one person to the other. And I hope that that is most people's experience when they listen. And then like, like we both record our chapters separately and send them into Tantor and Tantor stitches them together and, and then puts it out in the world. So yeah, aside from that, just kind of like vague feeling of like, oh, I'm not the only person working on this project. It's not much different from just doing your own audiobook. And you have to kind of take into consideration what the other person uh, is capable of doing as far as, you know, voicing voicing characters. So my next big challenge would be to voice a dual narration with a female narrator. Because I yeah, bet that, that would be interesting. I bet that in some ways would be easier because, like, obviously, then the expectation isn't that you would make the voices sound alike. Mm-hmm. But in other ways might be more difficult. But, like, yeah. that is the thing. And, like, the people who complained about dual narration books, they were complaining about male, male romances and specifically how the characters end up sounding different from the two different voice actors and one reaction i have to that is like i understand that like if you're used to listening to audiobooks and you you start to identify with a certain voice or the character and and you start to picture them in your head and then somebody else voices them and it's not the same voice that could be jarring and it could take you out of the story but then the other side of me is like well what do you expect we're different people (laughs) exactly like that's that's exactly how i feel like of course going into it with two different people it's i would assume they sound the same like my expectation would be if i had was listening to a dual narration that they should sound different and like we went into it knowing you so we knew what your voice sounded like but we had zero idea what tor sounded like so when he i think he started the book Mm-hmm. I was just like, well, this is way different than Kurt, you know, like you, you had mentioned. So like, it was cool that when Tor started talking, I knew it was the detective. And when you were talking, it was, forget the kid's name, but the kid. So it was like, I appreciated that. And I thought it was interesting. I, I think it would be, I wouldn't see the point if I'm doing a narration and both of them sounded the same. Mm-hmm. So that's my hot take on that. <laughs> Ooh, hot take. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, so I mean, it's it's an interesting experience. Um, I will say Tor and I immediately got cast again together for another book with like a an older gentleman and a, a twinky guy. So <laughs> Which one are you going to play? The, the, uh, I, I play the cat. <laughs> I play I, I play the twinky guy. I play the guy with the, the, the stereotypically higher voice. That's me. I don't know. It's fine. I like it. We do too. <laughs> yeah. I'm good with it. I'm 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 happy with where I'm at. Well, I don't think we'd have it any other way. Anything that's narrated by you, we we buy. So we of course well, adore you. your voice. Oh, 
Thank you. I'm going to uh, take that little snippet. Do not cut that out of the podcast <laughs> because I'm going to I'm going to send that to people, <laughs> to publishers. I mean, like, yes, you can you can use this as marketing. Hire me. Like, well, hmm, fans say they demand me, actually. Yeah. Although I will say I'm, I'm sure you did not buy that one book I did on uh, successful leaders like that, that business development book. <laughs> and if if <laughs> my my very first straight romance is coming down the pike. So I don't know. Is that your jam? I'll pretty much read anything, and don't count me out of the business leadership one. I, like, my day job could <laughs> make that work. <laughs> it's called Successful Leaders Aren't Bullies. Oh. Which, you know, seems like a an obvious statement, but <laughs> he, he makes some good points. Nice. Well, mm-hmm. one of my summer reading things was actually Straight Boy, so you showed up in my... Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I've been not wanting to tell Marky about it, because it was, like, I didn't... I didn't see my heart being destroyed towards the end there, but yet it was. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> but God, I fucking loved that book. And you did such an amazing job. Thank you. I fucking loved that book, too. I remember the last time I was talking to you guys, I had just gotten that book. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was a that was a moment. And it remains a moment. I, I loved I loved recording that book. I have since met the author, Jay Bell, who is so sweet and nice. And his husband is also so sweet and nice. It was just a dual love fest <laughs> when we got together. That's awesome. We just gushed over each other. That's it was fun. Awesome. Yeah, let's talk more about Straight Boy. I loved that book. Oh, man. I- Marky, why haven't you read it yet? <laughs> it wasn't part of my summer reading. <laughs> Mm, mm, okay, that's fine. I will say, even my husband is listening to that audiobook right now, and he does not listen to my stuff ever. But even he's listening to it. I'm I'm gonna do mild spoiler here. There, there's a moment of of, of heart rippage, but it's instantly soothed. So, mm-hmm. like, you can read like, okay, so I cried a little bit, but I was like on my way home. So- oh, I would hope so. Yeah. <laughs> I, I say that for Marky's benefit, so I'm not lying about yeah you know, the the level of of heart wrenching detail. But holy crap, I didn't see that coming. I, I felt this was going to be kind of one of those maybe a little bit mm-hmm. less than lighthearted, but you know, coming of age kind of story kind of things. And yeah, man, it got real real fast. Yeah, like a like a Simon versus the Homo Sapien agenda. Yeah, but a little bit darker. Oh, it it certainly gets darker. Yeah. But yeah, like the first. Oh yeah, that's what I had in I- mind. Yeah. Yeah, the first three quarters of the book, that's what you're thinking it is. And then it it does, yeah, there's, it's not even the last quarter. I think it's like the last eighth of the book. Yeah. Everything comes to a head and it's like, oh, oh my, which was a surprise to me. And this is why you always read the whole book, audiobook narrators. <laughs> this is why you always read the whole book. Because if I had started narrating that book before I knew how it ended, I would have made different choices about some of the people. Yeah in that book. And it was important that those people be the people they were consistently from beginning to end, because then by the end, it makes sense. Yeah, for sure. I, I think it really kind of took its turn when they went to go meet Renzo. Mm-hmm. That's that's where it stopped feeling like, oh, this isn't just a happy YA kind of story. There's there's some depth here. And it just, that's, that's when my heart started to do things. <laughs> yeah. God. That's a good point. I hadn't thought about it that way. Yeah, but the, like I, mm-hmm. I, I was out shopping and stopped in the parking lot because they had just gotten there and it was when he was going to tell him, but he didn't know yet. And they're just sitting there and I'm purposely leaving out what that is, but mm-hmm. like I couldn't get out of my car. I think I sat in the Texas freaking heat <laughs> in July mm-hmm. listening to that because I was just gripped by it. It was just like I had to see how that turned out. I think I was in my car for at least a half an hour. Oh, God bless you. Yeah. Jay wrote a really good book. Yeah. And I was very, very lucky to be able to to read it. So I'm I'm very grateful for that project. I can't imagine having experienced that any other way than you reading it, but that's <laughs> I'm biased. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. And I'll take it. Cause you know what? We all make money when you buy an audiobook. So the author can't be mad about that either. Well, I always do both. I do both with like cause it's pretty much the same price as buying just the ebook and then that's so true the, the audio so i just i i buy both because it's the same so mm-hmm. yeah uh yeah no no shade i do the exact same thing sometimes especially with longer longer books and if i'm out of credits mm-hmm. sometimes it is a more economical choice to buy the ebook and then buy the whisper synced audiobook uh through amazon i just want everybody to get all of the credit so i, I just try to <laughs> do it the best way i can is you know most support possible for my pocketbook <laughs> mm-hmm. 
But yes, absolutely loved Straight Boy. Thank you. And I do, like, I encourage people to give it a shot. Like, it's not a traditional, like, gay romance because it's not adults. It's it's teenagers. And that was one of the things that attracted me to it. That does not mean that sex does not play in the story. Like, teenagers have thoughts about sex. They express their thoughts about sex. They have sex. But the way the story is treated, it's just like, if sex is happening, it's happening off page. We hear about it. We don't experience it on the page as we would in most adult romances. Mm -hmm. But I, you know, having worked with teenagers as a forensics coach for over 10 years, I just felt like he really captured what it means to be a teen in the late 2010s. Yeah. And and it doesn't underestimate the experience that they have, you know, and, um, you know, I, I loved Simon versus the homo sapien agenda, but like in that, the main conflict is like a kid has to deal with coming out and like, how will people react to him? And certainly that's a thing that a lot of American teenagers have to think about and deal with still. But for many of them, that's like nothing. Like they're dealing with some hard shit. And uh, I feel like, like Jay captured that. Yeah. And uh, I, I enjoyed it, even though parts of the book are, are tough. And, and certainly, like, it deserves a trigger warning if somebody has experienced any kind of sexual assault or any kind of domestic violence. Be warned, you will, will experience some of that being talked about in the book. Yeah, not really. I mean, there's there's a little bit of violent moment, like, but the, I mean, the worst of it is just what's talked about more than what mm-hmm. happens on page. But yeah, yes. agreed. Yeah. And I do, like, it's an important distinction, I think, to say that the, the that does not happen on page. It's You just hear about it, yeah. but it's still triggering for some people. And so heads up. Yes. But read it for real. That's a fucking great. Mm-hmm. Loved it. Thank you. Yeah. Um, Marky, what have you read of mine that you can compliment me about? <laughs> <laughs> I was just about to say, well, shit, dude, I guess we're going to have to make that like a actual formal bottom pick at some point. So I can talk about that book forever. Sweet. Yeah, we can we can come back and do a special bonus episode where we spoil the crap out of it. Yeah, like, and, and Kurt can, can come back for visit number four. <laughs> hmm Yay. Sadly, I don't think I picked anything that you were involved in this, this time you. around, which just shames me, and I'm so sorry. <laughs> wow, I'm embarrassed for you, <laughs> frankly. <laughs> I mean, does this count? I'm talking to you and it's part of it. (laughs) No, that's good. So what have you been reading? Um, I read, oh, I'm finishing up Helen Gone by Tal Bauer. I think it's B-A. Tal Bauer. Mm -hmm. Um, And that's super good. I'm like 80% through it now. And it's the grittiest, cowboyiest thing I've read in a long time. And I super love it. And I finished up the first Curl Up and Die book by Amy Nicole Walker. And that's fucking hilarious. And I liked it. And I'm going to read like a, a manga, Monster and His Beast. And I haven't gotten to it yet, but I'm going to read that tomorrow. But holy crap, Helen Gone. I love that book. I can't stop talking about it. What's the premise other than cowboys? Because you can kind of tell that from the cover. Right. So it's basically, it starts off with like a murder mystery kind of thing. Like this dude finds his ex-lover like hanging from a tree, like he gets hung. And so he <gasps> brings him in. Oh my God. Yeah, it starts off with just like hits the ground running like oh shit so he like brings his corpse into the sheriff's office and is like you know he was murdered and the sheriff's like he was hanging from a tree he killed himself he's like bullshit and then while this is happening since it's a cowboy thing like all these people's cattle is being wrangled or whatever the term is for it (laughs) um, stolen Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and so a stock detective gets sent in to investigate which they're real. Fun fact. So he sent in to Wait, figure- this is a detective that just looks into cows? Just, just looks just into- Just looks like, into livestock? Yeah, just livestock detective. That is his whole thing. It's a real line of work with cowboys. Huh. Yeah. So he- The comes, more you know. Yeah, exactly. He comes in to, you know, figure out what's going on with the cattle. And of course he meets the dude whose lover died. And so he's like, he was murdered. And he's like, well, I'll help you figure it out. Then shenanigans ensue and it's fucking great. And they're cowboys and it's great. I don't want to like spoil too much of it because we're, Mm -hmm. you guys haven't read it and I want you to. (laughs) Absolutely. I think I will. That's a beautiful transition or segue into one of the things that I'm reading right now, which, and when I say reading, I mean listening because I only read the things I have to read into a microphone lately. But um, I've been listening to Hush by Tal Bauer. Oh. Oh, how is that? So good. Yeah. Even though if I, like, if I step back, I'm really annoyed by it. But I'm just enjoying it so much. What is, uh, I don't know if I know which one that is. Is it part of one of the series or is it a standalone? I think it's a series. I don't think it's a series. I think it's just a standalone. I mean, it's it, it's a really interesting story about a D.C. judge and his U.S. marshal that has to protect him. But like, it's one of those things where like, I just like, 
Joel Leslie is the narrator and he's fantastic and I, I love listening to to his books, especially books in this vein. He just he does older character, I guess, older, serious, typically masculine characters. Like I think he has such a good handle on them in a way that I, I never could, and so I admire that so greatly. And by the way, he would think I'm lying because he thinks he's not good at that stuff <laughs> when I have talked to him. And I'm here to say he's wrong. He's very, very good at playing butch men. But like butch men who have like a sensitivity, I don't know, I could go on all day. It's a it's a really good narration job but like when i when i kind of sat back and like thought about it like i was like eight chapters in and like technically the only thing that had happened is the two guys had finally realized they liked each other and usually that bugs me but it was just so well done that i was like oh wow a whole lot like a whole lot of nothing has happened and i've completely enjoyed the story and like we're a third of the way into the book and now now like the main plot's starting (laughs) i'm like oh wow there's like this whole other plot that's gonna start up after the two have have finally like said i like you Spoiler alert, <laughs> it finally happens. Well, it was, it's like that with Enemy of the State. Like, the, I, I, that, that's a series, and I've only read the first one of that. And that one was the same way. Like, it seemed, because it was like a secret agent guy who, like, falls for mm-hmm. the president. I want to say it, it's a pretty slow burn because, of course, they can't be in a relationship because it's right. against all kinds of policies. But by the time it finally does happen, it's like, way deep into the book and i'm like what has happened between like the start of the book and this it's like yeah. so much of it just building up that tension is he's just very very good at it i love it mm-hmm. agree so um is, is this an appropriate like should i just launch into like everything i've been listening to or do you want do it yeah you have more it. to share i don't want to like take over <laughs> But I'm realizing as I look at my Audible account that like, oh, I've actually listened to quite a bit. So the thing I finished before that was Queer as a $5 Bill by Lee Wind. Uh, And this was featured on the Big Gay Fiction podcast, which is how I found out about it. And I really enjoyed the interview with the author. And then I went and found out that the audiobook was narrated by Michael Crouch, who I love. And so I got it and I listened to it and I consumed it in like two days because it was just fantastic. I highly recommend it. Sweet. In in short, it is about a high school student in a fictional town in Oregon who ends up doing a book report about Lincoln and his one-time roommate, Joshua Speed Fry. Mm Mm-hmm. And comes to the conclusion that, like, obviously they were gay. that Or obviously they were in love. Mm-hmm. Maybe they weren't gay, but obviously these two men loved each other. And the book includes a lot of real information about Lincoln and Joshua Speed Fry, including quotes from letters that they wrote to each other. Oh, wow. Uh, letters that really exist and are are historical really the only and and certainly it is not a new conceit that like people say that lincoln had a relationship with this man but the way it is approached from the perspective of a a high school teen who is uh, himself in the process of coming out and the the complexities of like of saying this out loud as a presumed straight person Mm -hmm. who then has to say well actually i'm not straight and like will that ruin his credibility and how does that affect you know his his parents relationship with him and his relationship with his small town it was really just really really well done and uh, this is a debut uh, novel from lee wind it was excellent yeah and michael crouch is fucking fantastic and you should go listen to everything he's ever recorded stop buying my audiobooks go listen to that guy (laughs) Maybe. <laughs> Let's take mm. that snippet and send it to him and be like, hey, here's some marketing for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, this one's on my list as well because of uh, also from Will and Jeff, their recommendation. I've, I think I've already downloaded this one. I just haven't gotten to it yet. No. Yeah. Highly recommend. Sweet. I'm also, I'm in the middle of listening to Dreadnought, which they're going to talk about on their show this weekend. I don't know when our, this podcast is coming out, but as of recording this, they're going to be reviewing it this weekend, they said. But I'm not done with that. That's a lot of fun. What else have I read? Oh, also with Joel Leslie as Joel Frumkin, uh, The Music of What Happens by Bill Konigsberg. That was an interesting one. Yeah. I feel like it got a ton of attention. Did you, did you guys hear about this or was it just in the audiobook world that it got a ton of attention? I, I haven't heard of it. Have you just? No. At least not that I okay. remember. It, yeah, this one, like I said, it was interesting because it was like the cover of Audiophile magazine, which like only audiobook narrators subscribe to. So it's not like out there in the world. But for some reason, like this gay YA fiction book got just a ton of attention. Um, and it's a really interesting mix. So this is a dual narration. Joel Frumkin does it with Anthony Ray Perez is his name. And they both do a good job, but they're very different. This might be one of those ones where I, I'm like, don't know that I would have put these two people together. Gotcha. That's not... See, but even as I say that, I'm a, it's not what I mean. What I mean is that the performance styles that they both chose were not not always in sync. Mm. And I 
it's clear they are both talented enough that like if you would put them in the same room at the same time, they would have synced up perfectly. But it wasn't always on the same page, but still an enjoyable story. And I enjoyed it. That's fair. And I would imagine, I mean, it's hard to sync up when it's just sending files back and forth. So it's totally legit. It is. It is impossible. Yeah. And again, why why I understand that critique of dual narrations mm-hmm. when people shared it with me and then I, I experienced doing it. And and now as a listener, I can say, like, I think I get it. Mm-hmm. Like, like that two things can be excellent in their own right, but not always work together. Right. Yep, that's that that's a valid critique. I mean, they could be talented mm-hmm. and just not not mesh. So Yeah, there was just when switching chapters, there was always like a a 60 to 90 seconds of like, okay, now I got to get back into the flow of like how this other person narrates because they're they're just different. What else have I done? Oh, this is from March. So I'm going to sleep, slip it in because I've listened to it twice. Andrew Rannells. Do you guys know who Andrew Rannells is? Mm -mm. The actor? No. No, You're not Broadway people, are you? No. (laughs) (sighs) All right. Well, for the listeners of your podcast, I'm assuming a few of them because they read gay books are familiar with what's happening on Broadway. Andrew Reynolds is a Broadway actor. He was also in that TV show, uh, The New Normal, that Ryan Murphy produced a few years ago. He wrote a memoir called Too Much Is Not Enough, a memoir of fumbling toward adulthood. And what's really interesting is he took the tack of Rather than writing about his life once he got some acclaim, really he came to be well known through uh, the Book of Mormon. He originated the the lead role in that show on Broadway. Oh, okay. So, but the whole book is about his life up until he gets that show. Oh, cool. So, what it is is it's like all of the awkward, sad, exciting, weird moments that happen in life leading up to the point where it, it finally pays off. But how much he had to go through to get there, which I thought was just a really great way to approach writing a book. Um, And turns out he's a fantastic writer. And part of his job was directing voiceover, like when he was in his 20s. So the man knows how to read an audiobook. That's excellent. He is so funny and charming and just takes to it very naturally. And that was just such an enjoyable listening. I just, I feel like I have to bring it up. Like, I listened to it by myself. Then I made my husband listen to it as we were driving to and from Minnesota this summer. It is great. That sounds amazing. And then, like, it sounds wonderful. <laughs> I think I can relate to somebody it. fumbling through life. Like that's, that's the human condition, I think. <laughs> yeah. Well, and it's also, you know, as a gay man, I know you guys will relate to this. <laughs> He talks about his sexuality in such a frank and open way, and he does not avoid talking about sex, which is refreshing. Yeah. It's, it's so, it's so 2019 to just hear somebody be like, and they don't make a big deal about it. Yeah. You know, he's like, this is when I lost my virginity and this is the person I was with. And in this case, I hated it. In this case, it was really great. But like his sexual life is a part of his story and he talks about it. It's great. It's such a good book. I highly recommend it. And I highly recommend getting the audio because he performs it very, very well. And speaking of performances, I have to end with this. And this is such a weird offshoot. I don't know how much crossover interest there's going to be with this podcast, but like, I just think this is one of the best things I've listened to in a long, long time. I'm already excited. Um, Heads Will Roll. It's called Heads Will Roll. It's on Audible. It's an Audible original. It was written by Kate McKinnon and her sister, Emily Lynn, and they are both in it and it is filled up with people from SNL and Tim Gunn is one of the characters and Bob the Drag Queen is one of the characters and my personal Lord and Savior Audra McDonald is one of the characters. Uh, she is a Broadway actress. The gays who listen to this will get it. <laughs> if if you are a listener of this podcast and you have listened to Michael Leslie's performance of the Tales of Verania, that series from TJ Klune, you should pick up Heads Will Roll because you will enjoy it. Well, shit. I might have to pick it up. <laughs> that sounds interesting. I've just added everything it, you just said to my to be read list. <laughs> okay, good. It's great. Yeah, and uh, yeah, as my to be read list is just insane. As I'm scrolling through Audible too, like, oh, there's so many things I have to listen to. Yeah, yeah. Well, this is one of the reasons we did our summer reading thing because we get the podcast is super fun because we get to we get to pick what we read. It's not like we're handcuffed to anything, but because mm-hmm. we have to hone in on like one book and talk about it a month usually the rest of it just kind of gets stockpiled so this is our chance to just like binge through those things that have just been like blinking at us for you know months mm-hmm. yeah usually I, yeah it's time to to do like sequels because like we'll do a lot of first of series stuff and i'll usually like try to catch up with series that i've been behind on because it's just not 
mm-hmm. enough time, but no, there was too much new stuff. New stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, speaking of TJ Klune. <laughs> and speaking of sequels. <laughs> yeah. So this is our awkward, fumbly segue. You have a new TJ Klune book coming out, uh, Heart Song which mm-hmm. comes out in September, which is actually launching the same time as the book, which is super exciting. That's what we've been told. Don't hold us to it until it actually happens. Yeah. We have no control over it. But yeah, we uh, and it's funny because TJ and I were actually sending sending messages back and forth about it because I was like, so I got the contract and they're saying the release date is September 24th. And he was like, I'll believe it when I see it. And then like three days later, he's like, okay, now they're telling me the release date is September 24th. So I think it's happening. He was like, should I put it out on Facebook? And I was like, I think you can. Yeah. (laughs) I was like, it's it's as much guarantee as we're going to get. Like it's on a contract. So. Right. Well, I mean, he tweeted that. He was just like, hey, you know, this is what's happening. But like upside down, smiley face, like, (laughs) like, Yeah. I guarantee you, because things happen. Yeah. Is that what the upside down smiley face stands for? I guess. Like, I always view it as just kind of one of those, like, I don't know how to put it into words. Like, just like, I don't know, like, weird shrug mm-hmm. kind of thing. Like, yeah. Yeah. I know exactly the gesture. Okay. That makes sense to me. I'll start using it now. <laughs> but uh, we were arguing a little bit before we actually started recording about whether or not this book is going to destroy our souls and rip out our hearts and everything. So, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. looking forward to that. And I was figuring since it was yeah. out in September that you maybe would have started it by now. And I was really hoping to get spoilers out of you. But alas, alas, <laughs> alas, as of as of this recording, the plan is for me to take uh, Monday and Tuesday to read and prep the book. And I will start recording next Wednesday and I will be turning in that audio the first week of August. So, so exciting. Okay. I know it's on the schedule. I have it. Like I fit. I feel. I have the book on my iPad. I have not had a chance to read it because I have just had back-to-back projects. So I don't don't have the luxury of reading ahead. And and certainly with TJ's books, I need to take the time to like read the whole thing and right. really digest it and think things through. And I don't know, maybe get more Haitian Creole translations. You never know what he's going to throw in. <laughs> Too true. Mm-hmm. I will say I could spoil parts of it for you because he did give me the whole rundown of the book. He and I, when we recorded the podcast for Love Song, we talked for like an hour and a half and approximately 23 minutes got into a podcast because most of it was was spoilery stuff. And uh, he, he, he explained the plot to me. And if only I had had the presence of mind to like videotape myself <laughs> as he was explaining the plot to me, like that could have been some good context. Oh, right. Just me reacting. Oh, I would have loved just that. <laughs> mm-hmm. Plus, then you know, like the clunatics would have like gone in and like put in timestamps to be like, I think, like once they've read the book, mm-hmm. they'd be like, oh, I think his face here is reacting to like this thing. One hundred percent. Yes, absolutely. But I just, I did not have the presence of mind to pull out a, a camera and record myself hearing hearing TJ Clune tell me the plot of Heart Song. But now I need to go actually read the book. <sighs> I just like, if you could just tweet out like heartbreaks or everything will be fine or something like after you read it, because okay. I'm so terrified this book's going to destroy me. If you can't tweet it, just message Marky so you can make her feel better. <laughs> Sure. I was thinking I would, I will probably those, those days that I'm prepping the book, I will probably like maybe just as part of like my Instagram story, just like give my hot takes, like my totally non-spoiler reactions as I read it. So if you want to follow me on Instagram at Kurt Reads, you can check out those, those stories. I (laughs) probably, the stories for Heart Song will probably have come and gone, but maybe that's something I'll start doing on a more regular basis. Yeah. I'm going to be waiting on bated breath at this point. Like I'm going to have to know because I'm scared. Don't be scared. Mm-hmm. No, I'm, we'll remain scared. Like you cannot sway me on this. Like, like I said, like freaking Wolf Song killed me, and that one had like it wrapped up fine at the end, but still, like just destroyed. I had to go to work with like mm-hmm. teary eyes. It was bad. You know, girl, <laughs> emotions aren't a bad thing. It's okay to feel feel those things. Man, I guess, but like not if I'm going into work and my husband teases me. <laughs> like, okay, I have to be strong. Hard. If you're going, to work, well, it's just me that's going to tease I- you. Yeah, see? This mm-hmm. is my life. <laughs> I would rebuke your husband, but he seems to be a really great guy, no, so I won't. <laughs> I won't do that. And I don't know, maybe your reactions are not commensurate to the book itself. <laughs> maybe, yeah, maybe I'm just a weenie. Maybe, like, there's, there's maybe that. you're too much. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> it, could be, it could be absolutely that my I just wear my emotions on my sleeve, and any <laughs> anytime one character is even remotely sad, I just get destroyed. This is all fact. 
I'm totally yeah. okay with this. Man, that's got to be fun, though. That's a roller. <laughs> yeah, dude. That's a roller coaster that's, to have those kinds of feelings. Yeah, like, that's why I get so invested in shit. Like, that's why these books are so freaking important to me. Like, I'll, I'll read them, and then, like, my life will end, and then I just go to the next book and be like, well, hopefully I can be resurrected and be happy again. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. you know. And I, we, I mean, we talked about that off mic. I think that's what TJ does. Yeah. I think that's his roadmap. He's, he likes to tear down and then build back up. So I think, again, having not read the book yet, I'm fairly confident you can expect a tear down moment. Oh, yeah. And then at some point, maybe not even until book four, know that you will, you will be built back up. Most likely. Yeah, I don't know. Because Probably. he's been tweeting about how evil and twisted and maniacal he's being. And I know he's probably just doing it to fuck with us. But, like, mm-hmm. I don't think Bro. he oh. I have this theory that the reason why he's making it to where Heart Sung and Brother Song come out so close to each other is because we're all going to be so distraught. And I mean, we're going to be so happy and great. And you should read it right when it comes out. Sure, um, Jess. But, but yeah, I think that that might be part of why he's doing it that way, because he's got to build us back up before we all just die. Sure. Yeah, I, I'm ex- I'm expecting to have my heart torn out on this one a little bit. Mm-hmm. Or he's just an asshole. <laughs> uh, but he's, I think that should just be the name of the episode is maybe TJ is <laughs> just an asshole. Yeah. July bottom episode, top to bottom. Like, that's just, mm-hmm. that's it. That's what we're going to call it. And originally he told me he was not going to say anything about brother song coming out so soon he said it was going to be just the last page of heart song was going to be coming december 2019 brother song and that was how he was going to announce it but you know he can't keep a secret to save his life (laughs) he just has to tease people yeah well now he gets to do all the mean twisted tweets about Mm -hmm. me like who's like oh man my editor said i should actually dial up the humor because it's so dark i'm like you need to stop (laughs) Mm-hmm. I yeah I still though think like there's a part of me that lives for the potentiality the the alternate universe where he didn't say anything and I just got to sit on this secret until November 24th or until September 24th and just wait for like the first person to get to the end of the book yeah it'd be all it would be one of the critics like day one and then mm-hmm. everyone yelling at you would commence at this point we would yell it'd be like mm-hmm. how dare you <laughs> Yeah, like, oh my god, it's coming. It's going to be in just a couple months. <laughs> yeah. That would have it would have been epic. I'm sure I'm sure he has his reasons for for not doing it that way. So, I mean, with any luck then the audiobook will follow just as quickly with with Tantor Media doing the audiobooks now for a Dream Spinner Press. They have the option to release the book right away and I think they're smart too cuz mm-hmm. there's there is a lot of demand for TJ Klune content. Yeah. The sooner the better. Well, yeah, they can make their money back faster that way. Yeah, and for sure, especially his audiobooks, he he picks the best people for those. <laughs> I like to think so. He plucks us from obscurity and makes us into almost kind of sort of big deals. I will always herald the fact that like we had you on first. Like I love that you like contacted us when you were doing Gale stuff, and we were able to meet you before mm-hmm. it became like the big deal. So yeah, I like that. How how dare you? <laughs> Are you saying I wasn't a big, a big deal? deal. Always, but now you're even a bigger deal. Now is that a good backpedal? Well, Did you find that, <laughs> Jess. Jess, it's been so lovely talking to you. You as well for this podcast. Yeah, well, just I don't know who that other sound was. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. I love you. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, that's fine. Uh, I I still think of myself as as a a newbie, a beginner. And and frankly, like nothing will make you feel that way more than going to the Audio Publishers Association conference, which I had the good fortune to do this May. And man, I was surrounded by some giants of the audiobook industry there. I felt and I loved this sensation because I still feel this way. I felt very new and very green and like I still had a lot to learn and I like that. I like the potential of like there's still a long way to go and there's a lot of new New things to try and like really like i've i think I've, re- I've recorded about 30 books now not even all of them are out and i still have so much to learn and I, th- I think about where book number 30 is based on you know compared to where god what was what was the sumage solution like my fifth or sixth book or something like that you know like how far i've come since that first time we chatted yeah, yeah. i'm really excited about it and i you know i hope it's obvious that the work is getting better and and i still appreciate everybody who loves wolf song which was my very first audiobook but <laughs> 
I would, are you about to shit on your own work right now that we love? No, I'm not <laughs> because, and I've said this before. I've probably said it to you before. Like the work, the the book itself is so good that I would have really had to mess it up to mess it up. I think the gift that TJ gave me was those words and just the confidence that I could do it. And having any facility and experience as an actor and an interpreter of literature, like I got lucky. Well, I see. I'm trying to do this thing where I don't think of luck so much as like the skill when opportunity meets preparedness yeah yeah. Yeah. and so like i keep trying to think like i was very lucky that tj picked me but like at the same time like i had i had been coaching forensics for for 10 years and i had been acting my whole life and i had invested in some good equipment to begin with and so like to a certain degree i was prepared for that that break to happen but i still think it was i was lucky (laughs) i just got really really lucky we've talked about how you joke and it's part of your personality, but you're a very humble person. So it, it's hard to stomp in being like, yeah, I, I did this because I, I kick ass. Like it's, you, you're naturally so sweet and humble about things, even though you totally are a badass and like, like Wolf Song <laughs> made me cry. And like, I, I know clearly I cry easily and it doesn't mean much. Mm-hmm. It, it like destroyed me. I read the book and it made me sad, but it wasn't until no. I listened to the audio that I was crying in my car. Like it's, you're very talented. Thank you. I do appreciate that. And I am trying to be better about accepting compliments. So thank you. <laughs> I'm literally biting my tongue <laughs> to not say more. I know. No. Well, we've like I think on the last like the last episode you were talking about how you're like I hate getting compliments and it drives you crazy and so like I tr- try to not toss too much at you to make you uncomfortable but we just adore you so we have to do it so thank you <laughs> it's the dichotomy of of me because I I do hate it but I also love it yeah. here's here's my ideal situation you compliment me in a podcast that I'm not a part of and then I get to listen to it later okay we'll just <laughs> we'll just throw you up at random and just talk about how great you are. Sprinkled right. then I, like, I don't have I don't have to feel awkward in the moment, yeah. but like it can like lift me up and I can be like, oh, like that was nice, you know, and like nobody else is around. Nobody else is hearing it. I'm just like listening in my headphones. And I'm like, that was just a really nice thing that that person said. And that's great. That's when I can be like, all right, I can accept a compliment. Nice. But yeah, in person, I'm so awkward about it. Well, go and listen to last month's episode because I'm pretty sure we did that then. <laughs> I have. I've listened to all your episodes. I keep up. Yeah, no. I, I don't just look for my name. I, I listen. I'm a listener. I love I but I love podcasts and I do love this genre and the people in it. So your podcast, Jeff and Will's podcast. I do my very, very best to keep up to date. Uh, sometimes I have to do some catching up, but most of the time I'm I'm pretty good. Now that I work from home, I don't have a commute. Yeah. Yeah. So it, I have I've had to learn I drive my husband crazy because I have my AirPods in all the time oh god you can't and, see him so he's like talking to you <laughs> yeah but also oh, all right it's about to get real up in here <laughs> i like let's say we're watching a television show and i have to go to the bathroom i will put my airpods in and i will listen to like two minutes of a podcast <laughs> just to go to the bathroom or like uh, maybe i need to like go move the laundry over i'm going to be away from my my booth like three minutes tops mm-hmm. i will put in my airpods and i will listen to something as i go move the laundry over Hey, that's just making the most of every situation. It's, you know, otherwise, like, podcasts are my coworkers at this point. Mm -hmm. Like, (laughs) the most outside interaction I have with humans is uh, is listening to people talking to my ear. Because otherwise, I'm usually just listening to myself talking to my ear. (laughs) And that, uh, that can drive you crazy. Yeah, I would imagine. So yeah, so yeah, I I do tend to to over consume, but I, but again, it's because I don't have those structured times to like listen like I used to. Mm-hmm. And now I'm like, oh, I, but I I can listen to another two minutes of Pod Save America if I put them in right now. <laughs> My friends, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so so that's what I do with your voices and with Jeff and Will's voices and with mostly a bunch of political podcasts because politics is you know f- so fun right now. <laughs> and uh, the word for it. <laughs> but yeah, and and uh, and there's a lot of great content out there for narrators too if anybody's listening to this and wants to become an audiobook narrator it's like the golden age now is a now is both a good and terrible time to get into it because there's a lot of content you can consume to make you better but there's also a lot of content that isn't worth consuming that's out
out there. And there's also just so many people trying to get into this now. <laughs> Are there some things you want to recommend? Yeah, absolutely. You sh- if you want to be an audiobook narrator, you should be listening to the audiobook Speakeasy. It is uh, Rich Miller. He is a, an audiobook guy. I actually I got to meet him at APAC this year. Super nice guy. Very curious, good conversationalist. And he just interviews audiobook narrators, audiobook reviewers, audiobook technicians, and just kind of gets the perspective of a lot of different people. It's mostly narrators about the audiobook business, which is which is really, really great. So I, I would recommend that. Also, if you just want to find out more about like narrators you might enjoy, check out his feed. They are there. But even as I say that, I think like, do most people care about narrators? I mean, I, I do. do. <laughs> That's I would I would love to I think this is my inkling and I could be totally wrong. I feel like the male male romance community cares more about narrators than most genres, most listeners in other genres. And I have nothing to back that up except for the fact that people are like so unbelievably kind to me and like will say to me, like, oh, I buy everything you do. And I'm like and then I go to like my my book, my narrator groups on Facebook and they're like, Nobody pays attention to the narrator. Aww. Don't worry about marketing your books because nobody cares about you. And I'm like like, that's a healthy perspective also to have because, like, we're not there to get in the way of, like, the author's work. But also, like, I have people on my other, like, in my other messages being, like, they buy everything I do. So Well, this community is, the fans are so inclusive and, like, diehard but not in a, like, clingy, weird way. They're just, like, they want to support the art. They want to support the story. So, like, they're more willing to know the narrators and know who you guys are and appreciate your voices and how you read things. And just, I think... Kenneth Obi has like, I don't know, several hundred people on his group page or his fan group now, like his angels or whatever. Like, I don't think I've ever listened to anything that dude has done. And I'm already like in his freaking fan group. Like, it's just like, it's just kind of how it happens in this community. Like everybody's heralding their favorite people and like bringing more people into the fold because they want the genre to succeed. They want it to grow bigger and get more fans and be popular. And it's just, it's awesome. Like we, we got lucky that the genre that we fell into the rabbit hole has, I dare say the best fans there are. Mm-hmm. I think that's probably true. Yeah, I don't know. I I guess I got to break out into a different genre and see if what the reception is like there. Yeah. Or not. I don't really care if I ever do anything besides male male stuff or LGBT fiction on any spectrum. Yeah. I feel like any of the genres that have super voracious readers, like mysteries or just romance in general, like anybody who's going through a ton of books and going through a ton of audiobooks, you start to hear, you know, similar voices and you start to learn who it is, even if you're not normally paying attention. And you might have ones that you absolutely adore and ones that are just like, yeah, I don't want to listen to anything that person does ever again. And I think just the most voracious of audiobook readers in general probably have at least some idea just from the sheer amount of stuff they're listening to yeah it is insane to me how quickly some people consume this media Mm -hmm. something will come out at like noon and by three o'clock somebody has posted a review and i'm like how (laughs) <laughs> the book is 12 hours long. How? <laughs> yeah, it's insane. Okay. Like my hat's off to the people who can legit read that fast and retain the content because I can mm-hmm. skim things and like get the gist of it, but they're like sponges. Like they can tell you what page a line was on. Like it's insane. Oh my God. I can't tell you what the name of that person in the hunt I narrated was. <laughs> I was about to say, like, I have to time when we read our bottom picks because if I read it, like if I read it really fast at the beginning of the month, I will remember the plot, but people's names will just completely vacate my brain. Mm Mm-hmm. It's ridiculous. Yeah. You know, it's funny because I do the same thing now with narrating is I, I try to read the read the book much closer to when I'm starting the recording. Even if I have time to read it sooner, it's like, no, just read it the couple days before you start recording like you plan to. And just give yourself enough time to like ask questions and do some research. But it doesn't need to be like, like I read, I read Ravensong months in advance because we just didn't know mm-hmm. when that book was going to come out. And so I had an advanced reader copy of it that TJ had sent me. And, and it was just months later that somebody from Dream Spinner was like, it's time to do the audiobook now. And I was like, oh, I I don't totally remember what... <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> like, what that book was about. I almost had to like prep it a second time because like the notes didn't quite make as much sense to me as they had earlier on. So fortunately, I've been busy enough. That has not been a problem because usually I am prepping right before I start recording or uh, we've taken a lot of vacations in May and June. And so I've been prepping while on vacation and then recording while at home. Nice. Mm-hmm. Holy crap. It's been an hour. Yeah, I was about to say <laughs> have a full hour of interview which is sorry so awesome. no i'm oh no this is great <laughs> Love it. some of it you do have to cut out so there it's not oh, a, yeah. i mean it's still going to be a full hour sorry yeah pretty much <laughs> okay though i i hadn't even noticed i looked up thinking oh we're probably past the 30 minute mark oh we're way past that <laughs> 
Oh yeah. Um, but you are going oh, to GRL yeah. this year, correct? I am. We'll the tickets it. are purchased. The Airbnb is reserved. Yes. I look forward so to exciting. seeing you maybe sleeping on my couch. <laughs> well, <laughs> people who do not follow us on Facebook are going to think that's a weird thing to say. <laughs> but Well, and it happened in the politics know. group, so you have to follow us in the clinic. Oh, that's right. <laughs> Okay, the short version is they got such a good deal on their Airbnb, I'm half convinced it's going to be a doghouse when they get there. <laughs> or just like the family shed. They're like, here's a cot next to the lawnmower. Oh my God. It, it did say it was private and there are pictures. I still st- stand by the fact that you offered and I think we should have a sleepover. So, well, like I said, we'll see how the weekend goes. <laughs> my husband will be with me, but he's game. <laughs> Nice. Well, this will be fun. This is going to be Jess's first GRL, so we're, I'm so excited she gets to go this year. Me too. Yeah, I'm excited to not be a newbie mm-hmm. um, and to feel a little more comfortable with the whole situation. W- will you guys be arriving on day one? We're going to be driving out there Wednesday, so okay. we're we're driving from Texas. So it'll we'll probably uh, hopefully roll in like Wednesday evening. So I don't uh-huh. know if we're going to be able to catch any of the um, indie um, indie pro stuff that's happening on Wednesday, uh-huh. but for sure, I mean, we'll be there bright and early on Thursday morning. Okay. You know, they're doing the narrator stuff Wednesday night now. Oh, okay. Well, then we might be able to hit your stuff. I, th- I think it's. Eight to ten is the narrator panel. Okay, we should be able. So, yeah, if we can, if we roll aim, out early enough. Aim for that if you can, because that I think should be fun. And the, instead of doing it at the end of the conference like they did last year, they're putting it back at, like technically before the conference even begins. <laughs> so it's going to be the the Wednesday night featured featured thing. Um, and then we like, might be able to, like crazy and road trip strung out, but we'll. <laughs> We'll try to be there if we can. What better way to end a road trip, though, than like right. going to a probably freezing cold ballroom because they always tend to be freezing cold <laughs> um, <laughs> and listening to a bunch of audiobook narrators read at you. That does sound pretty legit. I, I'm yeah. actually, like that actually does sound pretty great. <laughs> right. And then collapse into your bed that night. Or yes, cot or air mattress or, <laughs> or kennel or whatever. Bale of hay, whatever you end up <laughs> sleeping on. Oh my god. <laughs> GRL should be great. Yes, GRL yes. should be great. I'm very much looking forward to it. Mm-hmm. All right. <sighs> So thank you again, Kurt, for taking the time to talk with us. It's always a pleasure for you to be on our show for the third time. And uh, we definitely hope we can get you back again. Yeah, absolutely. And for people who don't follow you yet, where can they find you online? I would say just go to my website, kurtreads.com, K-I-R-T reads.com. From there, you can contact me. You can get my email. You can find all my social media. Awesome. All right. All right. Well, then I guess we will catch you next time. Yay. Thanks so much for having me, guys. Of course. So why is Kurt so damn delightful? He's he's wonderful. Like I every time <laughs> we chat with him, it's always so much fun. I adore that man to death. Yeah, I am super super looking forward to getting to hang out with him at GRL. Mm-hmm. Hopefully, he won't be too busy since he's getting rather sought after out there. Yes, indeed. So ho- hopefully, he'll find time to hang out with us, lowly plebs. But. Um, <laughs> But yeah, so I know we've already said it, but thank you again, Kurt, for joining us. That was a super blast. And you are welcome anytime. Absolutely. Well, I guess that wraps up our summer reading July bottom episode. Next week, we're going to start a whole new adventure with a new bottom pick. And we'll go back to our regularly scheduled program of picking one bottom book for the month. So yeah, make sure you join us. Yep. Until then. Bye. Bye. Bye.